and we are back. What is up, everybody? I hope the last video did not scare you guys. In the last video, we learned what optionals are, and we wrote a whole bunch of functions that included optionals. But so far in this playlist, all of the functions that we've created have only ever returned one type of data. But there are cases in your app where you might want to return more than one piece of data. Maybe you want a function that returns two or three or 10 pieces of data. So in Swift, we use something called a tuple, which is basically one piece of data that has multiple pieces of data inside of it. It's called a tuple, and it's what we're gonna learn in this video. All right, welcome back everybody. We are cruising through this playlist. It's getting a little bit more difficult, I know. Do not worry. You will understand all of this stuff eventually. The first time we do it, it seems complicated, but after we do it five, 10 times, you're gonna get much more comfortable in it. So for example, two videos ago, we wrote some functions. In the last video, we then wrote a bunch more functions. And in this video, we're gonna write some more complex functions. But the syntax for writing functions should be getting a little more comfortable with you guys. The last video was pretty difficult because we talked about optionals. Optionals are incredibly important to writing good Swift code, but the code in this video actually should be much easier than the last one. So hopefully you guys get a little break here. Uh, we're going to talk about tuples. So, so far in this course, anytime we returned out of a function, we returned one single value, but we can also return a tuple, which has multiple values. So instead of just returning one thing, we can return two, three, five, ten 10 things. Let's right click the navigator, create a new playground page, and let's call this tuples. Right, I'm going to delete this and delete this, and let's write some code. All right, so again, let's create a variable called username of type string. We'll just say maybe hello. Let's say var user is premium of type bool, set it equal to false. And var user is new of type bool, set it equal to true. Let's create a function called get user name. User name. And this function will return a string. And we will return user name. All right, let's create another function called get user is premium. This will return us a Boolean. And we'll return user is premium. Again, in Swift, if you're only returning one thing out of the function and it's just one line of code, we don't actually need the return word here. We can just put it like this and the compiler understands that we were returning this value. All right, down here, let's create another function called get user info. And maybe this is the function that we actually call from our app. And maybe in here, we wanna get both of these values. So we'll say maybe let name equals get user name, let is premium equals get user is premium. And then maybe we wanna do something with both of these. But the problem based on our previous code is that if we return something out of this function, we can only return one item. So I can't return both of these, right? And that's obviously a problem as we try to scale up our app. And so we can return name or we could return is premium if we want to do a Boolean. But how do we return both of these from this function? To do that, we create a tuple. All right. So for now, this get user info, let's just return a string. Let's put a comment here limited to one return type. And we'll just return name. So even though we got a value for this premium, we couldn't return it out of the function. But if we did another function, get user info two, and we can then change the type on here to return two things. So to do that, I'm going to type in string. And then the second thing I'm gonna return is, is premium, which is a Boolean. So I will put in bool. And now to tell the compiler that both of these are part of one return, we're gonna wrap them in parentheses. So now this function is looking to return a string value and a Boolean value. And it's even telling us here that we're not actually doing that. So to fix this, we're gonna put this in parentheses and we're gonna return a string value as well as a Boolean value. 
So now when I call get user info two, I can get both of these pieces of data back. Okay, so let's put a comment here that a tuple can combine multiple pieces of data. So now we have both of these together. In the same way that we're doing it in a function, we can do it in a constant or a variable. So down here, if I said var user data one, and I set it equal to maybe the name, username, this is of type string, right? I could also say var user data two and make this a tuple of string comma bool and set it equal to username comma user is premium. So in the same way that we've been declaring in the last bunch of videos, something is of type string, we can declare something of type tuple that has a string and a Boolean. All right, so this lets us group multiple values. And we're not limited to two values here. We can do more than that. So the third thing we had was user is new. So we could add another Boolean into this and we can do user is new as well. So we can then expand these tuples to include more and more and more pieces of data. Now, what I wanna show you guys quickly, let's say maybe let, let's call this info one. And we'll set it equal to the result of get user info two. All right. So get user info two returns a tuple of string bool. Right. We can see here if I hold the option button and click on this, I can see that it is of type string bool. Right. It's exactly what we had it like here. We have it now down here. But what if I get this in my code and now I want to actually use the string value from it? Right. So and the name value from this tuple. So I can say let name one, I'll set it equal to info one. So the tuple that we got back, and I can see again here when I'm typing it, this is a tuple, it's showing us in this completion here. I press the period and I have this zero and this one. So what these are, these are accessing pieces of data inside in info one. And so these are chronological in order. If you're familiar with arrays, if you're familiar with arrays in software programming, I'm going to cover arrays later in this series. Arrays start at index zero and then they increment. So the first item is zero and then the second item is one. The third item is two. The fourth item is three and so on. So what this is telling us is that zero must be the first item in this tuple. So if I look at get user two, the first item is a string. The second item is a Boolean. So zero. And if we look at this, we can see that this is now a string. All right. And then we can also, so this is of type string. And you'll notice here if I put one, right, to try to get the second piece, which is a Boolean, the compiler should now yell at us because we can't set that Boolean to a string. Now, if you ask me, this is a little confusing to have to type in zero and one and have to figure out what is actually at zero. You could imagine that if this was in one file of code and this was in a totally different file, when you go and call this, you might get really confused. Like, oh, I totally forgot. What did I put first? What did I put second? And especially if you have a longer one like this, right? If we did user data two, now we have to figure out what is number one, what is number two. That's gonna get really, really confusing. And so let's solve this real quick. We're gonna create another function here called user info three. And this time we're gonna give each of these a parameter name. So here, this will be the name of type string, and this will be the is premium of type bool. The same way we set up variables and constants, we can set them up inside a tuple. So now if I do this again, let's say let info two, and we'll set it equal to get user info three. Again, it's the same thing when I hold the option button and click on it, right? This was a tuple of string bool. This is a tuple of string bool, except we have a name for the parameters. So if I come down here and I say let name two, and I set it equal to info two, when I press the period now, I don't have those zero, one, two. I actually have names for these constants. So here I can just use name or, or like premium 
And that is much easier to read than having to do, again, if I did info 1.0. Both of these work. This is a shorthand. Some developers will do this because it saves you from having to write some extra code. But I would say this is much more readable and probably preferable in most projects. And before we wrap up here, let's just do one final example. So I'm going to do another function here. Let's just say maybe get user info four. This time I'm going to get all both of these. I'm also going to get, let's say a value for is new. And I guess we don't even need these functions. We can just access these variables directly. So in here, let's actually just return user name user is new or user is premium user is new. And so this function will return the name, the is premium and the is new of type pool. And then maybe I have another function in my code that says like, do something with user info. Open the brackets here. And maybe after I call this function to get the user info, I want to then do something with the user info. And so I can then pass in a parameter to this function called info and make it of type. And I'll use the same type that is coming from this function. So I can pass all of the, all of this data in as one parameter into this function. So down here, as an example, I can say, let info equals get user info for, and since this type is exactly what is trying to, this function is looking for, I can now call do something with user info and then pass in the info. All right. So this is what tuples are. It allows us to basically combine mul or group multiple pieces of data together. And we, in theory, can scale this up infinitely. You could have a tuple with two pieces of data, 10 pieces of data, 100 pieces of data. But what I'm trying to get at at the end of this video here is that doing this can get pretty like confusing and overwhelming, right? Imagine you had 50 of these. That's going to be a lot of like pieces of code to be copying and pasting around your application. It's also going to get really confusing for you as the developer is because the actual code itself is going to get pretty lengthy. So although we can scale this up to infinity, there are better ways to do that. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of videos. And the ways to get around that is basically creating your own types. So we can create custom types that have multiple pieces of data inside them. We're going to do that in the next bunch of videos. So in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction to tuples. So these are great if you have like instead of having two separate pieces of data, you could easily combine them in, and pass them around as one piece of data. And then we can scale this up, but eventually we want to start creating our own data types, which will basically include a bunch of these pieces of data inside one type. We're going to do that in the next couple of videos. I highly recommend watching them in order. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, I am Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.